Hello and welcome to Call to Camera, showing you paintings that you've sent in to us that have given you assurance, comfort in isolation. In this programme, it's portraiture. Portraiture was an extremely popular category. You've sent in loads of rather wonderful images. And the whole history of portraiture in Britain really gets going in the 16th century when the painted face and body moves from just a mere conveyance of information into a sort of standalone picture. I've got to show you a painting that we had done 15 years ago. And it's by an artist called Stuart Pearson Wright. And it shows the three of us, my wife, Catherine up here, Oliver and myself, sitting outside with the house behind. And I remember so well the whole process. In fact, at the end of this program, I'm going to ask Oliver to recollect what it was like being painted himself because uh, he was only, you know, a very young kid at this stage. And I remember saying to Stuart, Stuart, we're not smiling in this painting. Are you, are you happy about that? He said, I'm not painting for the back of a cornflake packet. I don't want one of those gleaming, smiley looks. Portrait painting is a serious business. Now there's the thought. What I want you to look at now are images that I perceive to be family portraits. I may be wrong. Have a look at them. They're obviously something that, particularly if you're separated from a loved one, are a very important part of living with art. This is a portrait of a portrait painter at work. I love images like this, catching an artist when they're at it. And here he is with a portrait of a woman on an easel. It's late 17th century, early 18th century. I don't know who the artist is, but it's the perfect picture for me and also for this subject of portraiture. So portraits whose subject means something to you are not necessarily just members of the family that we've just seen. They can be ancestors, they can be historical figures for whom you have some sort of reverence or piety. They can be celebrities, people who have inspired you, you know, who excite you, turn you on in some way. Have a look at these ones.
For some artists and some patrons of portrait painter artists, the idea of just literally rendering the human face and body is insufficient. They want to play with it, amplify it, say something provocative. One way of doing it is to play around with the body itself, attenuate things, exaggerate aspects. Another is to put it into a broader context, add symbolism. I always think one of the great artists in this respect is Frida Kahlo, the Mexican painter, 20th century, who uses traditional folk art, the language of that, uh, and a sort of simplicity combined with other elements, sometimes animals, in order to put this over. I wonder what you think of these ones coming up. As iconoclastic as it might seem, having a painting hanging above the television, I rather like it because when the programme gets dull, you can just sort of wander up the wall and have a look at this, which is early 19th century. It's a view of a woodman in a glade. And this is an example of a portrait that's not really a portrait. It's more to do with a mood, a, a, a genre. And this is my final category miscellaneous if you want. It's portraits that are not specifically of someone, but their point is just to add a, a feeling of backdrop, um, to set a tempo. Have a look at these. Thank you very much for watching this latest programme. We've greatly enjoyed making it. I'm afraid they do take an awfully long time, which is why the next one, which is going to be abstract painting, will take probably at least three or four days. Who knows? And I've got Oliver to thank for his editing process. And on the subject of Oliver, you, well, you'll notice that I've returned to the family portrait that we got done 15 years ago. And I thought it would be quite interesting to ask him to cast his mind back to when he was, I don't know, six, seven years old, to tell us what it was like being painted. Oliver? Crikey, Philip, that was a long time ago. Um, if you cast my mind back 10 to 15 years ago, it was, it was, it was quite a memorable experience. Um, I was uh, in an artist studio, uh, and it's interesting because from the artist studio, I was transported magically to outside in the field, and it was Fascinating to see the technique and the process of how portrait painters work. Um, what I do remember um, is it was a very, very gruelling process. I remember having to stand for hours on end, my back absolutely killing me. Um, and it was a very, very gruelling process. But I think the end result 
is very good. There's no pain without gain or no gain without pain. Mm. See you soon. Bye-bye.